In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. Chaplain's Report today comes from the book of 1 Samuel we're continuing, and you may recall from yesterday that the last passage of Scripture we read was Israel demanding to have a king from Samuel. So Samuel, of course, being the great prophet, he's, he's sort of the lead prophet in Israel at this point. And they come to him and ask him to give them a king. And then a little episode ensues where God essentially tells them all the reasons why a king is a bad idea. And by the way, I do think it is not insignificant that those reasons last for an entire chapter. And this was not something that Samuel was just spitballing. These were commands coming directly from God, and God specifically tells him in verse 9, you need to explain to the people why having a king is not a good idea. Now, we went over a lot of that yesterday, so if you're interested in the backstory of that and, and the reasons that there should not be a human king other other humans, I encourage you to go back and watch the past two chaplains' reports. But as for our reading today, we're going to go ahead and dive into 1 Samuel chapter 8, verses 19 and 22. This is after Samuel has given, basically spent the entire chapter explaining why having a king is a very bad idea and Israel will come to regret it. And we see the results of that in verses 19 through 22. Now, after Samuel had heard the words of the people, he repented them, he repented them in the Lord's hearing. The Lord said to Samuel, Listen to their voice and appoint them a king. So Samuel said to the men of Israel, Go every man to his city. Nevertheless, the people refused to listen to the voice of Samuel. And they said, No, but there shall be a king over us, that we also may be like all the nations, that our king may judge us, and may go out before us and fight our battles. The two big takeaways I want you to take from this passage. The first is, God warned them, and they still said no. God specifically told Samuel, you need to lay out a very solid, reasonable case for why having a king is a terrible idea. And Samuel did exactly that. He was obedient to the voice of the Lord. And he came out and said, oh, having a king is going to be awful. He's going to conscript your, your sons to be soldiers. He's going to take your grain and taxes. He's going to have all kinds of false judgments. And we already talked about one of the big reasons that their rationale didn't even make sense. The, the whole reason that they gave for wanting a king is because Samuel's sons were exploiting them. Essentially, their complaint was, there are people that are abusing their power over us, and their solution to this problem was, so let's get one guy that has ultimate power over us. Well, that doesn't make any sense, but that's what they came up with. I mean, mob mentality, it's a heck of a drug. But in this particular episode between Samuel and the people, he gives them all these reasons when it comes to their liberties being exploited and, and how the king system is going to be bad for them and how they'll come to regret it and how he's going to cause them to sin and their sins are going to be far worse than anything that happened with the judges in Israel. And at the end of the day, they say, nope, still want a king anyway. I find that absolutely fascinating. And the reason that I do is because I think it shows something about God's nature. And we've touched on this in some previous passages before. God is going to let them have what they want. You ever heard that expression, be careful what you wish for? Sometimes, not often, and he always made sure that it wasn't something too dangerous. But occasionally, my parents would see that I was engaging in something that was stupid or going to hurt me or was going to be a bad idea, and I would beg them to do it, and they would be like, all right. That's what's happening right here with God. The people have been pestering him. We get the indication from the scripture for a while to have a king. And every time God's been like, nope, that, that's not my way. That's not the system I put you. Uh, that's not the one that I gave you for. Uh, I've set you apart from other people. I don't want you to be like other nations. 
And they kept pestering and kept pestering and kept pestering and came to Samuel over and over again. And finally God says, okay, you are bound and determined to have a king. I'm going to give you a king. And you're going to come to regret it. And he does, and absolutely everything Samuel predicts winds up happening later in the scripture. Every single thing. God told them, God warned them, he told them over and over again. And isn't that the way that we are in our own lives? When the Bible tells us that lusting after women that are not our spouse, or men that are not our spouse, you know, if you happen to be a lady, when it tells us that that doesn't lead anywhere good, we go ahead and do it anyway, at some point God says, all right, you're convinced, that's what you want to do, go ahead. He knows it's going to hurt. Hopefully that teaches us a lesson. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. When it comes to really any other kind of sin, whether it's it's drugs, whether it's uh, just being an awful person, uh, whether it's not loving our neighbor, regardless of what it is, at a certain point, if we continue to rebel against God, or rebel against His will and refuse to do it, God's going to say, okay, go ahead, do it. And then we're going to get hit for it. It's the same thing with, for example, an electric fence. When we touch an electric fence, that electric fence isn't punishing us for touching it. And it's not the power company, you know, forcing electricity through it specifically to hurt us. It's just we ignored the nature of the thing. The nature of the thing is, if you touch it, it shocks you. And that's what's going on here. God is not going to actively necessarily punish the people for making this decision, he's going to let them fall prey to their own decisions. It's actually kind of ironic that we've just been talking about liberty versus responsibility because this is a pretty good indication of what's going on here. The children of Israel were bound and determined to get their way on this, and God finally relented and said, okay, you, you can have your way, but you're going to have to deal with the consequences of that decision later. And they said, you know what, fine, we'll, we'll do that. And of course, they did eventually wind up coming to regret that decision. The second part of this that I really want you to zero in on is their reason for why they wanted a king. Did they want a king because really what had happened is Samuel's sons were not living the way that they should and exploiting them? Not according to this. See, what happens is that was their original excuse. That's the reason that they told Samuel that they needed a king. But the truth is, it isn't the real reason. And they kind of show their hand here. And by the way, like I said in one of my previous chaplain's report, that was a totally legitimate gripe. There really were people like, unfortunately, Samuel's sons that were abusing their power as judges and exploiting the people. However, what's going on here is the people are saying what their real motive is, where they say, uh, that they want a king because every other nation around them has a king. We want a king to go out and face our, uh, to fight our battles for us. We want a king to judge us and, and make do this for us so we can be like other nations. It's one of the dumbest human excuses for doing anything that has ever been invented, and yet we continue to do it. By the way, this is not something that is wildly out of touch with human nature. This is something that has been shown to happen over and over and over again in the Scripture. Why did Adam partake of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil? Because Eve took it and gave it to him and asked him to. It's really kind of the same mentality, isn't it? Part of the motivation for doing that is because Adam wanted to be like his wife, because now she had taken of the fruit, she had knowledge and, and all of these extra things that he didn't understand. I think at least part of that motivation may have been because he wanted to join his wife and be like her, and the reason that Eve partook of the fruit in the first place is because this devil tempted her with being like God. This is one of the reasons that the Bible is always very cautious about comparing ourselves to other people. Because Israel started looking around and said, we want to be like every other nation. We want to be like them. We want to have the king. We want all the pageantry. We want to be able to have as like, hey, this guy, he's the one that's going to lead us into battle. We want to be able to say that. Well, they weren't actually looking at how it was going to improve their life, how it was going to make them better, how it was going to bring them closer with God. They were doing this for all the wrong reasons. They were doing it for the same reason that a kid tries his first beer because all of his buddies are doing it. The same reason that all kinds of people get into all kinds of trouble, especially when they're younger, because they went with the crowd. And that's what Israel wanted to do. 
and eventually they were going to pay dearly for it. You see, the truth is, if they their real reason the, had been the reason that they gave earlier, you can kind of understand why Israel would be in the situation that they were and, and why they were so distraught about it. But here, they show their hand and give the real reason that they want a king because they just want to be like everybody else. What was Israel's big sin, the one that came back and constantly bit them in the butt? Idolatry. Why? They were trying to be like everybody else. They wanted to have idols and all these different gods and these immaculate temples and, and all of these other things, and they wanted to be like the other nations around them, engage in the practices like they did, whether it was sa uh, child sacrifice or you know all kinds of other evil, wicked things. They wanted to be like the people around them, and that got them into trouble more than anything else. And Samuel understands that, and they're about to go ahead and do it anyway, and eventually God turns them over to that and says, all right, if you want to be turned over to this depraved mind, if, you want to do, if you're bound and determined to do what you want to do, have at it. And eventually they do. And for the rest of their history, the kings, with a handful of very rare exceptions, like David, Solomon, Josiah, only a handful of good kings, and the vast majority of them were awful and caused all kinds of problems for them. Which I think the lesson for us would be, when we're looking at the wisdom of men and pitting that up against the wisdom of God, if we're looking at, okay, this is what everybody else does, this is what God says is right, probably would be a good idea to side with God. I mean, yes, collective human wisdom can be a good thing, and it can be something that is very beneficial, but on most matters, especially ones where God actually has something to say about it, let's go with God. He seems to be a little bit smarter than all of the combined people on this earth. Let's do what he wants us to do. Stay the course, friends. Studies show that YouTube videos featuring attractive women get far more likes and subscriptions than ones that don't. This is especially true if she's exotic looking. Luckily, in the modern era, there's an easy way to work around this. You see, I identify as a very attractive Hispanic woman, so now you have to like this video and subscribe to my channel, otherwise you're just an evil, heartless Nazi that hates brave, liberated, beautiful Latina women like me. Checkmate, Woke Brigade.